Welcome to Cannonball Crafts. We're going to be making that uh, raised platform you just saw. So let's start with everything you're going to need. Okay, so you need a wire brush. I think I got that one at a dollar store. Uh, uh, Olaf knife with a fresh blade. Basic glue gun. A pencil. Uh, this one is not uh, very sharp. You want it to be a little blunt for what we're doing. And rulers, glue sticks, and Cannonball made his first appearance. Alright, so you're going to need Mod Podge, matte. Uh, it's very important. You want the matte kind of Mod Podge so it's not going to be shiny. Black acrylic paint, white acrylic paint. These are craft store, cheap, not very expensive. And then uh, we're going to use acrylic paint. Nutmeg brown is how we're going to achieve our kind of wood color. We are also going to need twine to finish it off. Alright, and then there's also uh, the main event, what we're going to be using. Foam. XPF. XPS? XPS foam. This is what we're going to be making the wood out of. It's a very versatile material. You can buy this at hardware stores. It's insulation foam. I got this off of Amazon and this is the kind you want. It's got a matte finish. This is also insulation foam that's out there. It's kind of porous. Do not use it. Uh, the techniques we're going to be doing today will not work on this type of foam. You can ignore those measurements in the corner. I kind of winged this by eye based on a couple other ones that I built. But we want to start with just using the Olaf knife to cut out the foam. There's really no secret to it. Measurements will be down below in the description also if you want to build this at home. So we have all of our pieces cut. Now it's time to start weathering to make these look like wood. Also I didn't make the bracer yet so I'm going to use these later to make that backboard right there. Th those are included in the description below already. So. And I would suggest masking up for this next part because we are going to get uh, dust particulate all over everything as we texture these to look like wood. Here I am deciding which side is going to be the top and the bottom. And then I kind of just start with that blunt pencil drawing lines. And you don't want them to be perfectly straight lines. You want them to kind of bend and warp. Like think just old wood that's been out in the wilderness at a park for a very long time. Uh, we're not going for anything pristine here. And here I am just going back over some of the lines to make them a little deeper, a little more exaggerated, kind of have them splintering off naturally as wood kind of grows. Um, this is actually my favorite part of the entire process, besides painting. I think painting might be my favorite, but it is fun just to draw. And I uh, think you ruined it only to find out that it, it really didn't make a difference. I'm doing the other side now and you do, you do the tops, do the bottoms and you want to get the sides as well. You want the whole thing to be weathered and textured because you are kind of going to be looking at this from all directions sort of uh, depending on how you have it displayed. I definitely will put the less pretty side on the bottom. I mean, we're, obviously you want the you, the side you think is the best to put on top, but you get uh, you get two chances at it, so it's uh, pretty fun. Now I'm going to texture the front and the back of the top pieces of wood that the figures or whatever you're going to use this for will be standing on uh, as the deck. I like to kind of go down and kind of just make these distressed. And I, I tried something a little different, you'll see uh, this time with using the Olaf knife to kind of cut veins kind of channels into the sides yeah. um, this kind of worked it was it was interesting I mean it, it, did I did it really make more of a difference than just using a pencil I don't, I don't know but uh, just mess around and have fun now this is why we put on the mask because we're getting out our wire brush and this is really going to create a lot of dust as we scrape in a lot of texture a lot of little 
cuts and scrapes all over and you do kind of want to go with the wood grain that you've created but also back and forth a little bit because wood gets scuffed it gets damaged so really just just try and make it look kind of rustic and well worn And we're done with the first board. Now I'll do that to every single one of them. And I'm done. Now our next step is we glue the whole thing together with hot glue. So I have my gun here, it's already been warming up. And uh, this part can be a little difficult just cause it takes a while to hold it together to let it cool down to really solidify. Uh, you'll see I have some issues with uh, me being impatient, which is a constant issue in every aspect of my life. So uh, let's get gluing. So I just discovered the fast forward option, so I'm going to be fast forwarding through a lot of this footage, just showing you the assembly of just how I glued it. Uh, nothing super secret here, just making this platform, that's going to be the top of the structure. Now here I am on the back end making sure that I'm adding some super glue just to really hold this together. You're not really going to see this if you're displaying it on a shelf. So these are going to be really hidden, but it will just makes the whole structure a little more sturdy. And I, I didn't measure these before when I started, so I'm just cutting off that excess and re-texturing um, them. Now we are going to add the legs to the model. So same tactic, just super gluing. But make sure you realize what end you want to be the front. I think I did this here and I realized I actually did it wrong and I had to disassemble uh, a majority of it to fix that. So uh, just just pay attention. Oh, yeah, I should have noticed right there that no, no, that's, that's the wrong side. All right, so here we are. This is after I fixed all the issues where I realized I glued the wrong sides and I even broke the one leg. You might be able to see it. On the back you will, um, and I used a popsicle stick just to uh, use some hot glue to fix it. You're never really going to see it on the back, um, and that other part will be covered up with some more texturing. Um, in the description below there's the measurements for these foot bracers. I added them on the back just to give more of a footprint to the entire structure. I, don't, I, I hope that it just makes it stand a little more sturdy. So um, those are pretty basic, just some leftover cuts that I used. And now we use the Pythagorean Theorem to cut this part. I didn't actually do that, uh, I just used, I just went by eye, so. And there it is. Now we just have to paint it. So here we are on our painting table. This is just an old piece of cardboard that I've used again and again. And now we're getting out our usual suspects, which are Mod Podge and black acrylic paint. I think I got this from Scratch Bash, Stuzzin Studios, Black Magic Craft. I don't know who actually originated it. It's just uh, someone on the internet, someone on YouTube. Uh, realize that this is just the ultimate way to do it by mixing these two together uh, into one kind of goop you create this amazing kind of uh, mat that will just cover the entire model and give it like a very solid texture and since it's black it will go into all the crevices and you can really just start adding colors on top of that and you'll see here I'm mixing it there is no science to this there is no much how to tell you it's you just put black paint into Mod Podge until it's no longer gray it's more black than anything else so I, I don't know the exact measurements to it uh, you kind of just do it by eye and you shake it up really well All 
All right, then we just paint the whole thing black. Until it looks like this. This is just one overcoat of the black paint. You can see I didn't get into a lot of those crevices because the brush just was a little too big, but we're gonna fix that with our other friend of watered down exactly what we just used. Oh, and there was cannonball number two. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just mix a little bit of water. I'm using the water I'm using to clean my brush. Uh, it has a little bit of the black paint in it, so you kind of are just making a stain wash, and then you're just gonna pour that over everything, and that stain wash will get into all those little nooks and crannies. And doing that a couple times, uh, you'll get into all those spots, and then you just let it dry. It might take a while though, so this is the part where, you know, if you're trying to do this all in one day, this is not a one day project, this is definitely a, uh, there's some time between each step. So, uh, we're into the, we're into the end game though, so. Now you want to make sure it's nice and dry, because the next stage we're going to start adding this brown. And we're going to use dry brushing, so we're going to use just a little bit. Get the brush pretty wet. And then we're going to pretty much wipe all of that off. So just we're leaving behind this kind of hint of brown onto the onto the wood. And what this will do is it will slowly add in layers of color, and you won't get these big kind of blotchy messes that look like PS1 uh, graphics. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. So this is our first full layer of brown, but it's a little too nutmeg brown for my liking. We're going to hit it back down with some whites and then some blacks to really give it some texture and it will less, look less cartoony and a little more realistic. So now I'm getting ready to dry brush with my white. See, and I guess the hint of white is on there. I don't want the thing to be painted white. I just want to frost it. Uh, kind of like frosted flakes just bring up a little bit of that color and kind of see it's looking less ps1 a little more ps2 in there right is it just me am i the only one who sees that Now we're going to hit the whole thing with black and a dry brush. Same style, just you want to make sure it's dry so you're not blending paints. You don't want a Bob Ross situation here where you're trying to blend the colors because you really don't want that right now. You want the actual different colors to kind of all sit on top of each other and really create uh, a depth and a, uh, a character. All right, so we're pretty much done except for adding the twine around the feet to give it a little more character. It kind of just more reminds me of something out of uh, Ewok Village, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, just kind of that aesthetic of tied together uh, kind of rusticness. Uh, I don't know what you're going to be using this for. Uh, my friend actually thought of this as a pier, like a boardwalk for Creature of the Black Lagoon, which is not what I intended, but uh, actually that's what I made this for. I made this one for him. Uh, and I kind of painted it with a little extra colors to be green afterwards. Now I am gluing on the twine. This is just a little hot glue on the back of each of the legs. And you wrap it around a couple times. And you, you have to hold this forever because it will take a while for the hot glue to cool down and solidify. But once this is done and these are wrapped, you are essentially done. It's over. And we're all done, so thank you so much for watching, and uh, tell your friends if you like this video. Thanks, and I'll see you again. Bye.